All right, welcome everyone. Get your seatbelts on because we're going to take a nice long drive as we tour the new preamp Mark II. As you may already know, this pedal is a collaborative effort with Christopher Benson of Benson Amps. The original Benson preamp was a faithful recreation of the Benson Chimera 30 amp circuit. Instead of vacuum tubes, it utilizes FET transistors. In addition to the sounds and controls of the original Benson preamp, we've included some tasty goodies. Various clipping diode options, a low impedance silicon fuzz, and the mids control circuit from our Condor pedal. All that plus full MIDI control, 30 preset slots, and maybe the at a glance showstopper, motorized faders. Let's dive into the various parts of the pedal. I'm going to just basically go along with the manual. In fact, if you have one, it may be good to have it out so you can walk along with me as we take this journey. Let's start at the top of the pedal and work our way down. These six faders are where you'd find the familiar six knobs of the original Chase Bliss pedal design. The major advantage here is that we get the highly coveted visual feedback when selecting presets and using MIDI control. These faders can be divided into three segments. On the outside we have volume and gain. Moving inward, we have bass and treble. And finally, the mid circuit. Here we have a mids level control and a frequency sweep. The mids level is a boost and cut fader. When it's in the halfway position, it's not boosting or cutting any frequency. Higher positions boost the set frequency. Lower positions cut the set frequency. All the way down on the frequency control, is roughly 150 Hertz all the way up is a little bit over 4k okay now let's move down to the arcade buttons think of these as the switches that were on your original Chase Bliss pedal design now we have visual feedback when selections are made and when recalling presets using MIDI control you'll see options for black blue and red black is just the LED in the unlit state so if we were going to set the fuzz type, this would be black. One press gives us blue. Next press gives us red. This information is also present when recalling presets, so you know exactly where you are at any given moment. Let's start with the jump button. It's probably the only one that's not totally self-explanatory. It's designed to be able to jump from any preset to either the zero or five slot. I like to think of this behavior as similar to how our faves controller works, which can be set up to jump between a preset and your live mode. Well, jump is similar to that, but you can take it even a step further and set up subsets within your banks. Okay, so here's how we would set that up. Say you want to toggle between three different presets for a single song, then three presets for the next one. So let's say on the first song we want to be able to scroll around between 0, 1, and 2. On preset 2, we set the jump to 0, which is blue. Press save. Now when we scroll, instead of going up to 3, it's just going to jump back to 0. And I'm going between 0, 1, and 2. You can do the same with 3 more presets for a different song. Or let's try 4. Say on our next song we want to jump between 5, 6, seven, and eight. On preset eight, we're gonna set jump to five, which is the red option, and we're gonna save that. Now when I scroll, it's five, six, seven, and eight. But now you feel like you're locked in these subsets. Well, it's pretty easy to get out. You just jump out. So from this subset, say I wanna get back to that first one I was doing with zero, one, and two. I just set jump to zero. And now I'm at zero, scrolling on those three. If I want to go back to the subset I just created, I can at any time set jump to five, and now I've jumped up to five and scrolling on that subset. If you'd like to disable your jump for the long term, 
just go back up to the one that has jump marked, get out of it, resave, and now it scrolls like normal until you get to your other subset. We're going to set that one back to normal, resave, and now we're back to standard scrolling. Another thing I like to do with jump is at any given time, say I've gone over zero or five and I want to get back real quick. From six, I can go back to five, just like that. You don't have to keep pressing it to go all the way around and come back to five. Just think of it as a way to kind of jump into the middle of your bank. How about an Easter egg with that jump button? Let's say that we wanted to save preset five to slot number seven. Press and hold jump, scroll up to seven, press and hold save. Now my preset five has now been moved also to seven. You can even use this to rearrange the order of a bank. Move each preset in a bank to different slots in another bank. The possibilities are endless here. Thankfully, the rest of these arcade buttons are rather self-explanatory. The next button toggles the mid circuit to either before or after the Benson preamp circuit, or you can turn it off entirely. Q affects the mid's frequency fader. It selects the Q or bandwidth. Now, a bandwidth is a word that we hear so often we don't even really think about what it means, but it's literally the width of bands, or how many bands of the frequency spectrum. It gets its name from Q factor or quality factor as an expression of filter bandwidth. We don't have to get all technical though. Look at these little pictograms here. If you think of bandwidth, which is always displayed horizontally, you can see which ones will be affecting the most bands of the EQ spectrum. But what does that even mean for the purposes of making guitar sounds? The higher Q results in a narrower bandwidth, and the result is a more resonant or pronounced sound. Essentially, you can think of these as three levels of intensity. Black will be subtle, red will be very pronounced, and blue is in between. Next is diode, selecting the clipping diode options for the preamp. In the off position, you are hearing the transistor option of the original Benson preamp. Next is a symmetrical silicon setting, think Tube Screamer. Then, an asymmetrical germanium setting, think Klon Centaur for that one. The fuzz circuit is a heavily modded fuzz face style transistor based silicon fuzz. You have three options here. An open fuzz, a gated fuzz for a great sputtery sound, or you can take the fuzz out of the circuit entirely. The fuzz is located before the preamp and mid-range controls in the circuit. Speaking of, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the signal chain. Okay, so here we have the signal chain for the preamp Mark II. If we look here, we can see where the Benson preamp is. Uh, the four knobs would have been bass, gain, treble, and volume. So this is the architecture of the original Benson preamp. Uh, new clipping diode options have been added, so that's here in the signal chain. Uh, we've added a fuzz that can run into this and the mid circuit to the condor can be placed before or after the Benson preamp. But even when it's after, it's before the volume. And then it goes to the output. Okay, moving on. Here at the bottom, we have two stomp switches. Each has a primary and secondary function. The primary functions are bypass and gauge on the right and preset scrolling on the left. Secondary functions are accessed by pressing and holding each switch. For the right side, you have preset save, and on the left, you have bank scrolling. The preamp Mark II has three banks of 10 presets for a total of 30 presets. With a seven segment LED, we start our preset numbering on zero and go to nine. Pressing repeatedly will move through the current bank in a circular pattern. To move to the next bank, simply press and hold. Now you are moving in the same way through the next bank. Banks are black or off for bank one, red 
for bank 2, and green for bank 3. Pressing again will return you back to bank 1. You can press the right side to bypass and engage the pedal. Press and hold to save the current settings to the current preset slot. Again, to save to a different slot, use the jump button. You can press both sides at the same time to access the expression menu. More on that later. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the top of the pedal. You're going to see my battle scars. I've had this one a while. Pretty simple stuff going on here. We have quarter inch input and output jacks, MIDI in and MIDI through to pass MIDI messages downstream. We have a TRS expression jack and a 9 volt 500 milliamp power input. Let's have a look at using an expression pedal an expression pedal with the preamp mark 2. I will be using an expression slider so that you can see the heel and toe positions easily. Before I begin, let me show you a preset that already has expression control programmed. When you go to plug in that expression pedal, those faders controlled by expression will jump slightly. They're reflecting the current position of the expression pedal. So going back to the preset we were just at a moment ago, there's nothing set up here. So we're going to go ahead and set up some expression. Here I'm using a standard TRS cable. You can also use 0 to 5 volt CV or control voltage using a TRS cable with a ring floating. There are two expression options, local and global. First, let's take a look at local. To enter the expression menu from any preset, press both stomp switches at the same time. You will then have three pages showing three different things to adjust. The first page is which faders are under expression control, then you have heel position, and you have toe position. The first page is the E page. Here you decide which faders are under expression control. Think of them like a light switch. Up is on and down is off. For this, let's just do these two in the middle. Next is the heel position. Each fader not under expression control moves to the place it is in the current preset. This allows you to audition your sound and make proper adjustments for your heel and toe positions. Let's grab a guitar. Let's say we wanted that super resonant cocked wah sound at the heel position. Now we're going to go for the toe position. Let's just say we wanted that. Before I exit this menu, I like to just scroll back and forth and listen to what I'm doing. This is kind of auditioning your expression pedal settings. Realizing that the mids isn't even moving, let's add that to the fun too. So on the toe, we'll just drop it out. There we go. So now let's go ahead and come out. Don't forget to save. Now when we play, our toe position is very similar to what our preset was already doing. And then moving the expression pedal to the heel position drops us into that cocked wah sound. Let's talk about global expression. Local expression is for the current preset slot, but let's say you wanted an expression pedal setting that controlled a particular parameter across the entire pedal. A handy setting for this might be volume control or gain control. You can even set it to adjust Q and have a wah pedal on every preset. To set this up, enter your expression menu. From the E page, press and hold either stomp switch. You'll see a little red light come on in the corner. 
This means you're in global expression. Setting the options for global expression are the same as local. As you see, I already have it set to volume. Let's switch it over to gain. Then we go into our toe and heel positions. Let's say at toe, we wanted it all the way up. And heel, we wanted it all the way down. You can even listen to hear what that sounds like. From here, you can go ahead and exit. Now, no matter which preset you're on, you're getting gain control on every preset. No need to save this setting. It's either on or off. The settings will even survive a power cycle. To return to local expression, just go back and undo what you've done there. Press both sides and go into the expression menu. Press and hold either side till the little light comes off. You're now in local expression mode and you can go ahead and exit. Now when you go to each preset, each one has just local expression. Okay, this is the midis. We can get way too deep here. I have a different video that does the whole deep dive into midi features of the preamp Mark II. So let's just take a quick tour of the basic MIDI functionality of the pedal. Wait, what's missing here? Ah, that MIDI box. Don't need it. You just need a MIDI controller and a standard 5-pin MIDI cable going into your Preamp Mark II. The Preamp Mark II is set to MIDI Channel 2 by default, but resetting it is the same way as other Chase Bliss pedals. Press and hold both stomp switches at power up and then send it a program change. It will assign itself to whichever channel that first program change is on. Getting into the controls, you'll see that we have MIDI control of every physical switch, stomp, and fader on the Preamp Mark II. The six faders, the five arcade buttons, and two stomp switches. We also have control for expression over MIDI and a new way of saving presets with CCs. Simply send CC27 and then the CC value is equal to the slot you want to save in value 0 through 29 for all 30 presets. Let's run through some of this really quickly. I have all of the basic functionality programmed onto this Morningstar MC6. Let's have a look. Here are all of the faders programmed in. I have it set that a press sends a value of 0 and a long press sends a value of 127. So we can go through and see how each fader drops with a value of 0 and comes back up with a value of 127. Of course, you can hit any range in between those two numbers, assigning a different value. Here we have all the arcades, three values each, accessing all of the options for each arcade button. So on the top row here, I have value 1, 2, and 3 for mids, and you'll see over here, that's off, pre, and post. And down below, I have the Q for low, mid, and high. So here on the Morningstar MC6, I have a bypass toggle function, which is super handy. It's telling me what the function of the switch is in real time. So here we're active. So it's saying to bypass, press the switch, and then it flips over to engage. So now I just press to engage. Over here I have some preset scrolling. Here I have several save options programmed in. Let's say that we wanted to save preset 0 to preset 6. So here's what 6 looks like now. If I jump to 0 and press save 6, now 0 is duplicated onto 6. Alright, so with this I'm going to conclude this deep dive overview of the Preamp Mark II. I just want to say personally that 
I've found the preamp Mark II to be the most inspiring and most complete overdrive fuzz pedal I've ever used. I uh, don't even want to think of going with that one now. And all of us here at Chase Bliss, we hope that you find the same creative spark and enjoy many years of inspiration with your preamp Mark II. As always, if you have any questions, you can reach any of us at chaseblissaudio.com contact. Thanks a lot for watching.